width of attached gingiva. Hi there! Welcome to the second video of our gingiva series. In the previous video, we learned about the importance of the attached gingiva. An adequate width of attached gingiva prevents the spread of inflammation and helps in maintaining a healthy periodontium. Some researchers also believe that the width of the attached gingiva helps to determine disease prognosis and treatment outcomes. Thus, it is important for a dentist to understand how to measure the width of the attached gingiva, which we will now discuss in this video. The width of the attached gingiva is the area between the mucogingival junction and the deepest point of the gingival sulcus or periodontal pocket. Different parts of the mouth have different widths of attached gingiva. Facially, the attached gingiva is the widest in the maxillary and mandibular incisor region, which is 3.5 to 4.5 mm and 3.3 to 3.9 mm, respectively. It is narrower in the region of the first premolar, which is 1.9 mm in the maxilla and 1.8 mm in the mandible. Let us now learn how to clinically measure the width of the attached gingiva. This involves four steps. Step 1 is to determine the mucogingival junction. This can be done by the visual method that can either be direct or by using a stain and the functional method. If you recall our previous video, we learned how to differentiate alveolar mucosa and attached gingiva. Keeping these points in mind, we can locate the mucogingival junction. This is the direct visual method. Now, let us move on to determining the mucogingival junction by the visual method using a stain. The mucogingival junction can be located using an iodine stain, such as Lugol's iodine or Schiller's iodine solution. Iodine has an affinity to glycogen. Alveolar mucosa is rich in glycogen and readily takes up the stain. The attached gingiva, which is keratinized, has no glycogen in the most superficial layer and hence does not get stained. Thus, Lugol's iodine solution stains only the alveolar mucosa and clearly demarcates the mucogingival junction. Now let's talk about how we determine the mucogingival junction using the functional method. The mucogingival junction can be located by running a horizontally placed probe from the vestibule to the gingival margin using light force because the mucogingival junction is the junction where the movable alveolar mucosa meets the immovable attached gingiva. That covers step 1. Once we determine the mucogingival junction, we move on to step 2, which involves determining the width of the marginal gingiva. The depth of the gingival sulcus or periodontal pocket is measured using a periodontal probe. This is the width of the marginal gingiva that can be noted down as A, as seen in the image before you. From here, we proceed to step 3, which involves determining the width of the keratinized gingiva. The distance between the mucogingival junction and the tip of the marginal gingiva is measured. This is the width of the keratinized gingiva noted as B in the image before you. This distance covers the marginal gingiva and attached gingiva, both of which are lined by keratinized epithelium. The final or fourth step involves calculating the width of the attached gingiva. The width of the keratinized gingiva is equal to the sum of the width of the marginal gingiva and the width of the attached gingiva. Therefore, 
the width of the attached gingiva can be calculated by subtracting the width of the marginal gingiva from the width of the keratinized gingiva, which is B minus A. As a dentist, measurement of the width of the attached gingiva is a routinely performed clinical procedure. And we hope this video made it easy for you to understand how this is done. Let us review what we learned today. Pop quiz. With this, we come to the end of our video. In our next video, we will discuss the microscopic features of gingiva. We hope you had fun learning with us.